It was a day like any other. The air was thick with fog and the city's inhabitants wandering around and that's when she walked into my life. The start of my troubles. Woman in red. Hello. Mr. Smith. I'm Mrs. Johnson. She had the looks and the glamour of a sophisticated gal. What was she doing here? And a dump like this, a guy like me. Come on in. The name's John Smith. Private Dick. Call me John, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, okay. Then you may call me Ivor. I don't know if you can help me, but the police will have more concern. Of course I can help. I've been the half old cops in the city. Well, that's my sister. She's missing. I last talked to her yesterday on the phone. She sounded frantic like something was wrong. A missing person, you say? I'll take it, but I can't guarantee I'll get her back. Who was the last place you saw her? Her apartment. I had a look there, but... No luck. Maybe you could do better. She lives over in Wobberton, in the old Keller estate. Here's a spare key. Finding her here would probably be too much to ask for, I guess. I can't have it too easy. What's the fun in that? The room had the smell of a perfume. Yup, woman smell. No doors or windows broken, so no forced entry. She left on her own accord. Drawers were still filled with clothes. She wasn't planning on going anywhere anytime soon. The dates on these letters are from the past few months. Is this her boyfriend? No, her sister would have told me. Possibly a secret admirer. The initials were R E J. Royal England Jockeys? Rough electrical jazz? Didn't make sense to me. The one on top was the most recent. A couple of days old. It said things of love and time spent together. Sappy poems and such. Meet me at Garrick's Motel on the 5th. That was yesterday. The only lead I had. Did you see a lady here the other day? One that came from across the building? I know, I might have. Yeah, now that you mention it, I think I did. She was a real pretty thing. Talking to her sis she was. Is that all? Any hints to where she was going? 
Nah, she sounded a bit worried. Though, talking about someone might be after her, didn't mention who. Oh, thanks. Then she made another call. A second call? To who? When? What about? Ahem. <clears throat> to some guy lovey-dovey stuff. You're too good to me. See you soon, Garrix. Sounds like someone was testing her. I don't know, I couldn't hear what she said. Thanks. I hope I had some good info, though now I've lost some spare change. I'm off to Garrix instead, where the seedy motel, where a missing person and a mysterious friend stay. I loved her! Then how do you explain all this? I was told to come here in the letter she sent. When I got here, she was... She was already dead. Then why the letters, huh? Why with the secrecy? I couldn't let my wife, her sister, find out about us too. So you're... Roy. Roy Edwin Johnson. So when she wanted out of all of this, and threatened to tell her sister about the affair, you decided to pump her full of lead? No, I'm innocent. I tell you, I was framed. The letter, the letter. I've heard enough out of you. You're going to jail. <laughs> Let the judge judge you. Another case closed for John Smith, and I need another drink. Didn't expect to see you here again. Well, after all your hard work, I thought I'd pay you in person. Hi, my name. Sorry about your sister and her uh, husband. Like that, she was gone. Never to be seen again. That's when I knew it. The husband was innocent and the devil woman was to blame. She knew all along, planned the whole thing too, setting them both up for a trap. The handwriting matched. She wrote the last letters, murdering her sister and framing her husband. And I let her slip past me and get away. 